Today I'm giving you an overview of the Black Panther early years omnibus. What's up guys, BJ Kicks here. I buy comics, I read them, and I review them, all for your viewing pleasure. If you're new here, welcome. If not, welcome back. So this week, Wakanda Forever is premiering in theaters. I'm actually going to see a screening of it tonight. But before we jump into the next era of what Wakanda looks like on screen and on film, I wanted to take it back to where it all began and give you an overview of this. Black Panther, the early years omnibus, featuring some of the Black Panther's earliest adventures in Fantastic Four, the Avengers, and of course, the 1970s series Jungle Action. So I'm going to go ahead and switch up the camera view and give you a detailed overview so you can see what to expect. Before I do, though, can I give a huge shout out to our channel sponsor, Organic Price Books, for sending this book over for me to review. And if you would like to purchase this book or any other omnibus edition, hardcover, oversized hardcover, trade paperback, and so on, you can use my coupon code BJKicks at checkout. Or if you're buying two items or more, then you can use the code BJKicks, ship it together to save 5%. So super excited and thanks to Organic Price Books for sponsoring this video. Now, let's jump in to the Black Panther Early Years Omnibus. All right, guys, here it is. This is the Black Panther early years omnibus. And like I said, this is where it all began. This is beautiful cover art by Rich Buckler. Um, and this is the cover to Jungle Action issue number eight. So let's take a look at what this collects before we jump inside here. This collects Fantastic Four issues 52 and 53, uh, 56 and 119. Tales of Suspense 97 through 99. Captain America 100, The Avengers 52, 62, 73, 74, 77 through 79, 87, 112, 126, Daredevil 52, Daredevil 69, and Daredevil Annual 4, Astonishing Tales 6 and 7, Marvel Team Up 20, Jungle Action 6 through 24, and Material from the Fantastic Four, issue number 54. Quite a mouthful quite a bit collected in this book and this is basically as you can see all of the black panthers early adventures this is what's going to give us our introduction our origin our first glimpses at the nation of wakanda and a whole lot more so taking off this dust jacket you can see on the artboard is this nice um image of black panther jumping out of the panther statue and on the front Black Panther Omnibus. So very, very cool. Now let's go ahead and jump into this. And yes, Spine Police, I did stretch this one out ahead of time. So this is the Black Panther Early Years Omnibus. I already told you what it collects. Here's a shout out to the main creators on the book. Ooh, love these images. Images already. Love it, love it. Black Panther with the Avengers. And here is your proper uh, credits. Uh, crediting the inkers, the pencilers, the colorists, editors, and so on. This says collection covers by Isad Ribic. Oh, that was the original or the uh, standard cover. I got the direct market cover. And then here's your table of contents. A foreword by Jesse Holland. And then we jump straight in with Black Panther, or excuse me, with Fantastic Four. Issue number 52, which is the first appearance of the Black Panther. I believe this, this is his first cover appearance as well. So basically on this, uh, in this issue, we see the Fantastic Four taking on a trip to Wakanda, taking on a sort of mission in Wakanda. And while they are there, they encounter the Black Panther. Now, they don't know who this guy is. They don't know why he's fighting them, but he's fighting them and um, doing a pretty good job of it. He's making a light work of the thing here. And he basically defeats all of the Fantastic Four and at the end reveals himself to be the Black Panther and um, a black man. Because <laughs> apparently people didn't know or didn't think he'd be black at the time. But anyway, that's Fantastic Four 52. We jump into 53. And like I said, we're introduced to Black Panther 
pretty quickly and we're just thrown straight into uh, the world of Wakanda. This is Stan Lee and Jack Kirby, by the way. Um, and this might be some of the only Jack Kirby art that I own, uh, which is a shame to say because Jack Kirby's art is really good. It holds up even now. So anyway, after Fantastic Four, we're getting into some other adventures. Um, and T'Challa basically becomes like the trusted friend of the Fantastic Four. And then it kind of jumps around, right? Like Black Panther doesn't get his own series out the gate. So here he is in an issue of Iron Man. Then he's in an issue of Tales of Suspense uh, featuring Captain America. Um, and he's just kind of bouncing around from issue to issue. Oh, my bad. Tells the suspense is all of these. They just keep switching the billing. But he's bouncing around from issue to issue, like helping uh, different mainline Marvel characters solve problems. And so, uh, by the way, I got to say, I've not read this material before. I bought this because I wanted to have it for a historical perspective. Just on a, a note of the uh, printing, this paper is pretty thin and you can see right through. <laughs> depending on what's on the opposite page you can see through it so if that bothers you it's just something i wanted to make a note of but continuing on again you're seeing uh black panther in a bunch of different uh mainline marvel books here's avengers issue 52 with black panther on the avengers can't lie, I'm not a big fan of Black Panther with his face uncovered. Like, give me full cow T'Challa. But yeah, um, I bought this not for these early Avengers, uh, Avengers adventures. <laughs> uh, for me, what I'm really excited about are some issues that are coming up later. And let's see how far along we are. All right, here's Black Panther making an appearance in Daredevil. And let's see if we can speed this up a bit, shall we? I love that. I mean, I mean obviously we could kind of tell this was going to happen, but pretty much every issue in this book features Black Panther prominently. And I love that. And I love how much you learn about him through all these other titles or at least from what I can tell. So we're getting slow pans into Wakanda. We're getting introduced to different cast of characters, people that are close to T'Challa. Um, heroes for hire. <laughs> but yeah, people that are close to T'Challa, people that are important to him. And then, <laughs> seriously, that's hilarious. There's a little shout out to Fat Albert in here. But yeah, man. So I don't pretend to be the Marvel historian here, is Man Ape. I buy these things because I would like to learn the history. And Black Panther's become one of my favorite characters. Like ever since the movie in 2018, R.I.P. Chadwick Boseman, um, what I've kind of done is like a sort of pseudo deep dive in Black Panther and all sorts of other media. And Marvel does a really good job of like, promoting things that they want promoted. So there is a Black Panther podcast that pretty much breaks down every major Black Panther run up to and um, even include like a preview of the current John Ridley run. And that podcast, I'd highly recommend listening to it. Um, maybe not if you don't want to be spoiled by anything, but if you just like history and people talking about like the context surrounding their decisions and things like that. It's a good listen. Um, but anyway, listening to that podcast, I was like, you know what? I want to read all of the Black Panther. And so Marvel made it a little bit easier this year with the release of this omnibus, uh, the Tony Hasey Coates omnibus, uh, the Christopher Priest omnibus that, uh, is not quite arrived yet, but it will. Um, basically the only thing we are missing outside of, you know, a bunch of other like mini series and stuff. Would it be a Black Panther by Reginald Hudlin omnibus? And then you've pretty much got all of his major appearances in nice oversized hardcover collections. Uh, but this is the one that starts it all, of course. 
So we've seen Black Panther and Marvel team up. We've seen them in the Avengers. We've seen them in Tales of Suspense. We've seen them in so many places. And then finally, we're about to give him its own series. And this is a foreword to that series by Don McGregor, who was the author, the writer of that series. Why do we call comic writers writers and not authors? Just a question. Somebody in the comments will answer me. But here we go. This is the Jungle Action featuring the Black Panther, issue number six. This is technically the Black Panther's first solo series. Um, and this is Don McGregor taking like a sort of anthology magazine style book and repurposing it to make it about this character. And here we go. This is Panther's Rage, uh, which apparently is considered to be the first graphic novel. Um, and we've got the first appearance here of Killmonger, which is very cool. This is Jerry Curl Killmonger, as I'd like to call him. And this run is what really defines and revolutionizes T'Challa. It solidifies Wakanda as a its own sort of world within the Marvel Universe, with its own heroes and villains, its own conflict away from the outside world. And what's even more interesting, oh, by the way, this is where uh, Killmonger throws T'Challa over uh, Warrior Falls, just like he did in the movie in 2018. But what's even cooler is, like I said, uh, Don McGregor goes out of his way to define the world around Black Panther and build on the legacy built by Stan and Jack uh, with maps, maps of the land of Wakanda. So he's really doing laying the groundwork for what Wakanda is, why it's so legendary, why it means so much to Wakandans and what the, the overall structure, the politics are like in the nation. So really cool stuff. Now, this uh, jungle action was actually collected just earlier this year in the uh, Marvel Classics Black Panther by Penguin Books. And I did an overview of that. So I will kind of really power through this section here. But I don't really want to because this, in my opinion, is the most important part of this book. This is the reason to buy this book, right? Because you're getting oversized artwork. Uh, retouched colors in a way. Uh, it's bright, it's vibrant, and you've even got letters pages like this. This is, this is the book that puts T'Challa on the map. And I think this is the best format for this material. Uh, can't even lie. But yeah, the Panther's Rage storyline, um, was meant to be serialized storytelling in a time period where serialized storytelling wasn't like, you know, uh, the big thing, like it, most stories are one and done. And this is meant to be like a sprawling epic. Here's some nice little design pages, <laughs> original design for Black Panther. Crazy design for Killmonger by Rich Buckler and Klaus Jansen. Just really, really good stuff there. Um, and in a minute, I'll do a comparison to that Black Panther book. Um, as a matter of fact, let's stop now and do that. All right. So just to give you a comparison, this is the Black Panther Omnibus. And this is the Marvel Classics Black Panther Collection by Penguin. Um, and as you can see, there's a bit more gutter loss here. Um, not a ton more, but a bit more. But the biggest difference is one, this artwork is a little bit bigger on this page. Well, actually, it's close to the same size, but it is still a little bit bigger. The biggest difference is the difference in the paper and therefore how the colors translate. It's a lot more muted in this collection than it is in this omnibus. And we'll see that, especially with like these bright yellows and reds as time goes on. But this is a good collection if you don't want any of that other stuff and you just want basically the Panther's Rage material by Don McGregor. Um, and this is still available at Organic Price Books as well. But I mean, for the price, I'd rather get more bang for my buck and get all of the surrounding context with this omnibus. Here we go. Still more maps of Wakanda. Still more like details, world building from Wakanda. Really cool stuff. Still in the middle of the jungle action series. 
Don McGregor laying the groundwork for what everyone does with Wakanda in the years to follow, even up until now. Very cool. Um, <laughs> Venom. Obviously not the same Venom as what would come along later on by Todd McFarlane and such. But funny that there's a Marvel character called Venom. And yeah, man, so we get a lot of T'Challa's earliest adventures. We get like everything that builds him up to be like the hero Wakanda deserves. We've even got him in a little bit of a love story with Monica Lynn. And um, man, this art is amazing. Billy Graham, Rich Buckler, a lot of great artists, a lot of uh, great artists of color who up until now didn't really have much opportunity to write or draw characters of color. Um, now, it's important to note that uh, Black Panther was the first Black hero, but Luke Cage ends up being the first Black hero with his own series at Marvel. And um, actually, both Billy Graham and Rich Buckley had done some work on Luke Cage, interestingly enough. Uh, but yeah, man. This is pretty much the collection, and it's awesome. So let's flip to some extras. I'm just going to skip. Oh, wait, you can't skip this. There are a few different stories in this book where it's T'Challa fighting directly against the Ku Klux Klan. Like, look at that. Um, so to say that T'Challa is a symbolic hero it's probably the understatement of the millennium, right? Like a black hero fighting against literal clan. Like he's being hung on a cross to burn. Like this is not your mom's comic. Well, maybe it is. This is back in the seventies, but this is like really bold stuff to be happening at this time during the peak of the civil rights movement. And for Don McGregor, a white man to be writing it just shows like, you know, with all of the toxicity we hear with how charged our political climate is and all of that, it's never been as simple as one group of people is good and the other group of people is bad, right? There are good and bad people of every race, color, and creed. And um, it's cool that I know Marvel was like gritting, <laughs> gritting their teeth to allow this, but that this was even allowed to be published is... Amazing. Uh, amazing. Love this cover. Might be my favorite jungle action cover. But anyway, now that I've spoken on T'Challa versus the clan, let's jump through to some extras where you've got the original cover art for Fantastic Four issue 52. Um, the unused original cover with the different design. Um, some more pages by Jack Kirby. You got other covers, pinups, black and, black and white sketches, um, death regiments. Oh, wow. <laughs> Don McGregor sh stored his jungle action plots in dated envelopes, which is interesting. Um, and, you know, I'll let you guys get be surprised by the extras when you get them. So I won't go over every little page. But a lot of great stuff here. A lot of great stuff here. Like I said, if you are interested in this book, you can grab it at our channel sponsor, Organic Price Books. Um, this, I believe, is going for about $85, something around there. You can get $2 off using my discount code BJKIPS at checkout. If you're buying three books or more, let's say you want to pair this with the another omnibus by Tom Hasey Coates, overview coming soon, then you can grab that and you can grab this Black Panther coffee table book. Use the coupon code BJ Kicks, ship it together, and you'll get an extra 5% off your order. And that's going to do it for me. I will see you guys in another video very soon. Until then, hope you saw something you liked in this one. If not, that's cool. You can always buy what you like. Just make sure you read what you buy and be nice to others because kindness makes the world go round. Peace.